Hello, this is the chapter 6 lesson. Uh, this uh, chapter we're going to talk about confidence interval estimates. And we're going to break this chapter up into three parts, A, B, and C. Part A, we're going to talk about scenarios where we have a single population. Part B, we're going to talk about comparing two different populations. And then uh, uh, part C, we're going to talk about uh, other scenarios where we're comparing two different populations. And uh, so one note about this lesson, uh, all three parts, we're going to be using the Excel workbook chapter 6 for doing the calculations. And so I'd like to start off here with uh, kind of a review of an idea that we've talked about before, about the relationship between statistical inference and descriptive statistics. Remember in uh, statistics, we want to know something about a large population. But in order to know that value exactly, I'd have to go out and get information from every single member of the population. And that's virtually impossible to do. So instead, we get information from a sample. And then we calculate descriptive statistics. And then we use those descriptive statistics to make generalizations or inferences about this large population. And probability allows us to go from one to the other. And so we've talked about descriptive statistics. We've talked about probability. Now we're ready to talk about statistical inference. So to uh, illustrate this idea, let's look at this example that we've seen a couple of times before. Uh, suppose we want to know the mean weight of all adult males in the United States. Uh, in order to know that number exactly, I'd have to go out and weigh every single male in the United States, add up all their weights, divide by the total number of males in the United States, and we'd call that number mu. Call that the population mean. Now that's impossible to do. So instead we go out and uh, we weigh each male in a sample of 500. That's relatively easy to do. We calculate x bar, their sample mean, by taking the mean of all those weights, divide by the total number of males in the sample, which is 500, and that gives us uh, our sample mean. Now our hope is that this sample mean x bar is a good estimate of mu. But whenever we estimate something, we always want to ask, well, just how good is that estimate? Probability allows us to answer that question to some extent. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about how this is done. How can we measure how good of an estimate uh, something is? And so start off with, uh, or next, we need some, some definitions. So first, a point estimate for a population parameter is the best single number estimate of that parameter. So point estimate means simply a single number estimate. Now, related to a point estimate is a confidence interval estimate. It's a range of possible values for the parameter with a level of confidence attached. And the level of confidence that we're often going to use is this 95% number. You're going to see this number 95% come up a lot. And uh, so we're going to start off with a point estimate, which is a single number estimate. And then based off of that, we're going to calculate a confidence interval estimate, which is a range of possible values. Okay. Now the confidence level that we just mentioned is a measure of just how confident we want to be in our final results. We're never going to be able to be 100% confident. So we want to decide, well, just how confident do we want to be? And typically, we use 95% confidence level, but that's not the only confidence level that can be used. We could use a 99% or 90% or really any number between 1 and, uh, and 99. Now, associated with uh, this idea of a confidence interval estimate is a margin of error which is the maximum distance between the estimate and the actual value at the given confidence level. So this margin of error is really going to be our measure of just how accurate our, our, our estimate is. If this margin of error is small, then that means we've got a good estimate. If the margin of error is large, then that means we don't have a very good estimate. Now, confidence intervals uh, have the general form of a point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. If we subtract the margin of error, that gives us a lower bound on the value of our parameter. If we add the margin of error, that gives us an upper bound on the value of our parameter. 
So we're going to talk about lots of different types of confidence intervals, uh, but they all have this general form. We have a point estimate of our parameter. We're going to calculate a margin of error. We add and subtract the two, and that gives us our, our bounds on our confidence interval estimate. So to uh, talk about our first type of confidence interval, let's look at example 6.1 from the textbook. And in this example, we want to know the mean systolic blood pressure of all people in the United States. Now, in order to find that number exactly, we'd have to take the blood pressure of all people in the U.S., add those up, divide by the total number of people in the U.S., and we'd call that number mu. Now, that's impossible to do. We can't go out and measure every single uh, blood pressure of every single person in the United States. So we're never going to know that number exactly. So suppose we go out and we take the blood pressure of 3,539 people. Now that's still a lot of work, but, but relatively simple in comparison. Now let's suppose that we add up all those, uh, those blood pressures, divide by 3,539, and we get a sample mean of, uh, of 127.3. And likewise, we calculate the standard deviation of those 3,539 numbers, and we get a standard deviation of 19. Okay. Now, this number, x bar equals 127.3, is a point estimate of mu. It's a one number estimate of this population mean. So that means that mu is approximately equal to 127.3. But we want a measure of the accuracy of this estimate. Just how accurate is it? Are we pretty close, or are we not very close, or just exactly what's going on? Now, we're never going to know exactly how close we are, because if we, if we knew exactly how close we were, we know the exact value of mu, but we can't know the exact value of mu, so that's, that's impossible. Um, but we want to use some probability to get a, a, a measure of this accuracy at a desired confidence level. Okay? And so the book talks a little bit about the theory behind calculating a confidence interval. Uh, estimate. We're not going to talk about the theory here in this lesson. We're just going to talk about uh, the general formula, the basic idea, how to do the calculations in Excel, and then most importantly, what it all means. So here we want to estimate a population mean mu. I want to do this with a confidence interval for mu. And to do that, we need s, which is our sample standard deviation. x bar is our sample mean n is the sample size, and then t is a so-called critical t value with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now, a t value is a, a value from a certain type of continuous distribution called a student t distribution. Uh, it's somewhat similar to the normal distribution, but uh, we're not going to get into exactly what, what the difference are. But, um, uh, and then the, the degrees of freedom. Uh, deals with um, deals with the sample size. In this case, the degrees of freedom is n minus one, uh, and the formula for the margin of error is e, denoted e, and it's t times s divided by square root of n. Now the book talks about different cases for the margin of error. One where we have a small sa uh, sample size, other where we have a large sample size. Uh, we won't get into those um, into those uh, differences here. Uh, we're just going to talk about the so-called small sample size uh, confidence interval estimate. But that's all there is to calculating a margin of error. We take our critical value times the standard deviation, divide it by the square root of n, and that gives us our margin of error. Now, once we calculate the margin of error, we can write the confidence interval in three different forms. Uh, one is here, x bar plus or minus e. That's, again, point estimate plus or minus margin of error. Uh, we could write it in this form, x bar minus e, comma, x bar plus e, and put it in parentheses, and this gives us a range of possible values for mu. Or this third form, and this is the form that I like the best. I like it because it, it most explicitly says what this confidence interval means. And this is very similar to the second form. We have mu, our population mean is in the middle, and it's greater than x bar plus e, but less than x bar plus e. So three different forms, and they all mean the same thing. Okay. 
So let's uh, look at how we can calculate this uh, margin of error in the confidence interval uh, using the workbook. So we've got this uh, sample of 35, 39. We have a mean, a sample mean of 127.3, standard deviation of 19. Let's calculate a 95% con confidence interval estimate of mu, uh, the mean blood pressure of all people. Okay. And um, so the uh, uh, so to use this uh, workbook chapter 6 uh, has several different worksheets. If we go to the worksheet mean, uh, we can uh, change the numbers in the yellow cells which uh, the confidence level is 0.95, N the sample size, 3539, X bar is our sample mean, S is our sample standard deviation. Uh, the formulas automatically calculate the margin of error, and it takes into account the, uh, the sample size, whether it's a large sample size or a small sample size. And um, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. And then it calculates the lower limit, and the upper limit of our confidence interval estimate and uh, does everything automatically for us. Okay. So kind of summarizing our results here, our 95% confidence interval estimate of mu is mu is somewhere between this lower limit of 126.7 and the upper limit of 127.9. So we would interpret this by saying that we are 95% confident that mu is somewhere between 126.7 and 127.9. Um, so this gives us more than just a one number estimate of mu. This gives us a range of possible values for mu. And that's what all confidence interval estimates do. They give us a range of possible values for our population parameter. Now, we might ask, what exactly does this confidence level of 95% mean? And in, uh, in next chapter, we'll talk a little bit more about what this means, but let's just kind of state it. 95% uh, confidence level means that if we were to select many different samples and for each compute a confidence interval estimate of mu, then about 95% of the intervals would contain the true value of mu. So if we did a whole bunch of different samples and for each one calculated the confidence interval estimate, some of those would contain the true value of mu, some wouldn't. 95% uh, confidence level means that about 95% of the intervals would contain the true value of mu.